My name is retired HM3 Max Rowe. While serving in Iraq in 2009, my vehicle was struck by an RKG-3 grenade. This resulted in a right leg amputation, burns to my body, uh, seizures, TBI, and balance impairment. This is my father, Ryan Roan. He uh, has been through all this with me, and uh, he's been my rock. When I did get my leg amputated, he actually lived with me for three months, and uh, he's just been through the ringer with me. Well, he was always a real fun kid. That's all I can tell you. Pretty giving, fun to be around. Uh, this whole process started when I became a lifeguard. Went to EMT school, joined the volunteer fire department, and I remember one of my instructors telling me, you know, if you really want to get good at this medical stuff, uh, go to the front lines. That put me on the path. I actually walked into the Army recruiter first. They uh, threw a bunch of money at me. I went home and I told my mom, and uh, she said, you're not joining the Army. So then uh, I told her I was joining the Navy and that I would be safe. She did not know that I was going to be a corpsman with the Marines serving in Iraq. Of course, I was young, um, thought I was bulletproof. So I was going to try to go to reconnaissance or some kind of special forces. Um, I was told to go do a deployment first. So I got attached to a police transition team. We go over to Iraq and then we teach the Iraqi police how to do their jobs. I loved it. I loved the military. I loved every bit of it. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Our daily mission would be load up, go out to the police station, see what's going on, go to the prisons, check out the prisoners, everything like that. We decided to go on the outside of the city because it's a, it's a hot spot. So as we were going on the outside, we get a, a call from the radio that there's an IED in the, right, in the way. They decided to divert through Fallujah. There was a guy who just popped out of nowhere, pulled a grenade out of his sleeve, threw it at my vehicle, uh, punched through my door, hitting my right leg, knocking me unconscious. I mean, my team saved my life that day. So he was already there by the time we got there. It was a blur and it was unexpected. Of course, I was glad to see him, but that was my kid, you know, he banged up. We were, uh, we were doing good. We, we made it to my 10th surgery. I'm in uh, the hospital in my barracks. And one of my chiefs was like, you don't look good. And your leg is red. And they decided to go and remove all the hardware that they just put in. And during that process, they found a medical clamp that they left in my leg. And that kind of was the fall. That was the start of it. I spent another year and a half trying to save my leg. I was on uh, all kinds of pain meds. And it just, uh, I never did anything for it. And I was deteriorating. So then I got back to the hospital and I was like, hey, we need to go ahead and amputate my leg because this is, this is killing me. Eventually, I got to a point where prosthetic started to fit, pain decreased, and I just kind of bounced back right after that. Next year, went to the Warrior Games again and uh, did really well. And uh, that was kind of like my, my victory lap. Like, I'm gonna make it through this now. So this is Lou J. Um, we met in Long Island, New York. He helps me out with uh, some like PTSD stuff. He'll come over and put his head on my knee to apply pressure uh, in his command for rest. And it's just to kind of like interrupt uh, the intrusive thoughts. Another big thing is he helps me out with uh, nightmare interruption. If I'm sleeping and I have a nightmare and I start shaking or convulsing, I'll come over and just nudge my thigh until I wake up. Most of the time he just jumps on me, but it's still effective. He's just, uh, he's just good. Like, uh, there's no downside to him. So whether I'm having a bad day or a good day, he's always the same. It doesn't give me a whole lot of time to feel sorry for myself because he's waking me up at six o'clock in the morning and uh, you know, it's time to get the day going. My daily routine is, uh, is very good now, but there's still a lot of challenges. Uh, I have never felt comfortable uh, in the shower or in the bathroom. It's just, uh, that was the first time I fell when I was an amputee. 
it's stuff like that that it's I don't know what to do to make that situation better other than just kind of laying down or crawling. Uh, Randall, my prosthetist, uh, who was also an HVOT recipient, he told me about the program. If I got a home for Homes for Our Troops, I mean, this just opens up a brand new chapter. I can breathe again, and that bathroom, I mean, I almost cried when I saw it. It's just never felt safe to be in that environment. I'm gonna get opportunities that I've never had in my life. Homes for Our Troops is a very special opportunity that's beyond belief. I had no idea that there was something so special out there. To any donor, any supporter, you are supporting the greatest organization that I have interacted with. I don't know how to tell you how much hope is restored because after you get injured and you're going through it, it's just a uh, just a grind and it just kind of wears you down and uh, it's just kind of restores your faith.